Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video. Sorry for the absence of content as of recently, but if you've been catching my live streams, you know that I am not dead, you know that I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! a lot, and you know that I've been really enjoying the game. The biggest issue I've had with making content is that I try to hold myself to a specific set of standards, and if I make a video and I don't like it, I just don't put it out. <laughs> so it just it really frustrates me when I try to make something and it doesn't you know live up to what I think it could be in my head. So I end up just not making anything, but hopefully we can change that, and hopefully I can pull my head so far out of my own ass to which I could see the fact that I could just put videos out that people would enjoy regardless of whether or not they stand up to my set of standards that I want to put out. But anyway, what I've got for you today is a Lunalite deck profile. This is not the list that I played at YCS Vegas, but I did play Lunalites at the 3v3 YCS in Las Vegas this past weekend. My entire team played Lunalite. Uh, they played different builds from me. Uh, but they played builds that were inspired by things that I'd come up with for like Cyberstein and do Exterio and doing a lot of other different techie side deck choices going into things. And we all had relatively a good experience, unfortunately bubbling out of that event just before Top Cut. Uh, but essentially, this isn't the list that I played at, at uh, Las Vegas, uh, but it is a build that is heavily inspired by the list that I did play in Vegas with a lot of changes. Uh, I've basically tested a lot of this deck since I got back from Vegas. I literally wanted to play nothing but Yu-Gi-Oh! once I got back from Vegas, but I haven't been able to have time to stream. Uh, so I've just been playtesting this deck a lot in my own time. Uh, and basically, what I've got here is what I think to be like a really, really good Lunalite list. Uh, it's effectively Lunalite Time Thieves, but it does not play the standard way that you'd expect Lunalite Time Thieves to play, because it doesn't play the Lambda Gamma package. It plays a lot of, you know, just big combo energy, Lunalite strategies and theories, but still plays Winder for Retrograde because I believe the Time Thief ending boards are some of the most developed and oppressive boards that the Lunalite deck can make because it just handles such a plethora of different things that you could throw at it. Uh, effectively, like having Trap Under Redo or plus Retrograde every single turn one handles a lot of stuff. And then on top of that, they're playing Under Dweller and an Appaloosa for two or three negates. So that is what I want to show you today. Uh, this deck list that I'm actually really proud of. Like, I'm actually been, I've had a lot of success with this in uh, my recent testing, but enough rambling. Let's just get into the list. It is a 40 card list. Three copies of Lunalite Kaleido Chick. Uh, this is obviously standard. If you're playing any less than this, then I don't know what you're really doing. I don't get it. Um, but three copies of Lunalite Tiger. Again, obvious three of. Uh, these are the bread and butter cards of the deck. Uh, if you're playing any less than these, then I don't know how your deck functions consistently because the biggest way I think that they could hit this deck is not to ban Tiger, it's to ban Lunalite Perfume because if they ban Perfume, that takes away so many cards out of the deck as far as consistency-wise, whereas the, interac the like interaction with Tiger and Zephyros and Martin is kind of busted, but the reason it's so good is because of how consistently you get there with Tenki, Foolish Burial Goods, Perfume, and each of these cards. Effectively, each one of these cards is a 12 of in your deck, whereas if they were to ban Perfume, for example, suddenly these go down to 6 ofs because you don't have Perfume to search and you don't have Foolish Burial Goods to search. Uh, so you just have these plus Tenki. Uh, so, like, I think that that would be, like, the best way for the deck to get hit if it were to get hit. Uh, but I don't know if it would get hit at this point. It's really been underperforming, which blows my mind. I think this deck is actually just really insane. Maybe just people just aren't playing it correctly or something. Because, I mean, whenever I play this deck, I bully people with it. But anyway, carrying on, uh, two Martin and one Emerald Bird and then one Honorary Lunalite card in Black Wings Zephyros the Elite. This is effectively a Lunalite card ex in everything but name. Honorary Dragoony card, Honorary Lunalite card, anything but a Black Wing. <laughs> Honestly, uh, this ratio is kind of standard. Uh, you could cut Martin down to one, but it works really well with dangers. It works really well with like Armageddon Knight with Foolish Burial. So you want to have multiples of it in case you draw one. It works very well with um, with Allure because you can just banish this and just get the other one. And then you get this back off the Emerald Bird. Uh, but you need to have one of these to play with before you get to the Emerald Bird access. Uh, it's just, it heightens your ceiling uh, to play another one because it means you're less uh, vulnerable to DD Crow and things like that. Uh, but that's basically just the standard 10 Lunalite lineup. Uh, but a card that not a lot of people play, but I think is really good, is Armageddon Knight. Uh, Armageddon Knight does so much. It combos with everything in the deck. Combos with Tiger, combos with Perfume, uh, combos with Dangers. Uh, if you're playing Magician Souls, it combos with that. Spoiler alert, I'm not playing Magician Souls in this build. Uh, I don't think the card's bad, per se. I just don't think it fits what I want to do for this build, which is to play every single game that it has. Um, but, like, this card combos with so much because you just go... Armageddon Knight, dump Martin, add trap. If you have Lunalite Perfume, then Perfume brings back Martin, and then Perfume can discard Serenade Dance to 
search for Tiger, and then you can make four tricks, and then four tricks uh, add Zephyros, which gets discarded off Nance, and then you're just like all gas. Um, it is a more vulnerable chick, but like when it goes off, it is a much more powerful chick because Chick sending Martin does not add the trap card. This sending Martin does, uh, and also this is just a different uh, a different typing for Curious, which comes up a lot as well. Uh, but then. I'm playing kind of a lot of dangers compared to what other people are playing. I'm playing six. I'm playing the five good ones and then Mothman. Uh, effectively, Mothman comes up a lot because Mothman being a level four is super relevant because you're playing a rank four deck. And then the rest of these cards, I would be playing less of them if I was playing Magician Souls. I'd probably be not even be playing the Suchinokos, honestly, and probably just be playing these four like most people are. But the thing with Magician Souls that I actually don't like in this particular version of the deck uh, is that it almost creates choke points in and of itself, uh, and it doesn't work with all the cards in your hand at all times. Uh, now, obviously, Magician Souls is broken because you're able to do things like discard Serenade Dance, discard Lunalite Perfumes, send Tinkies that have already been active, all that sort of stuff to get value. But when you're not doing those sorts of really, really bonkers and really broken interactions with, Magician Soul with like Magician Souls, the card is strictly average, in my opinion. Um, I look at what Spiral does with Magician Souls at all times, and like I start salivating because they get insane value out of that card at all times. Whereas with our deck, with this Lunalite strategy, there's only a couple of really minor interactions that make it better, or like not even on par with what Spiral does. Whereas these cards across the board are always good. They're good discards for perfume. They allow you to snowball really effectively. Um, they are good to reveal when you have multiples of them in your hand. Uh, effectively, this deck is designed to either open Lunalite hands or open hands with dangers with good cards to reveal uh, in conjunction with the dangers to try and discard off of the dangers. Um, but like the only card that sucks at that is Mothman, but you need to play it because it's a level 4. You could play Chupacabra in its place, but honestly, uh, Mothman is just uh, better than Chupacabra because if you're discarding Chupacabra, bringing back one of these is cool, but like they all effectively do that anyway because Nessie gets another card you can reveal which gets one of these which summons a card anyway so Mothman being a Trooper Cabra would be kind of redundant um, but personally like I want to play more dangerous I want to play a second Mothman I want to probably play a Bigfoot uh, like I think the danger cards are like the best part of this deck and trimming down on them uh, is like it seems kind of weird because like they're just such good discards off perfume they're good to reveal they're good discards off of like you can discard them off Nyarla or Barricade Borg uh, and just have them be free extenders. They make making your curious a lot easier. Uh, I personally just really like them. So that is why I'm playing so many of them and not going the Magician Souls route. Uh, another engine I'm playing in this deck is I'm playing the Time Thief Winders, which means I'm also playing Retrograde. Effectively, what I want this deck to do is I don't want it to do like standard Time Thief Lunalite stuff where you end on Lambda, IP, Redoer, Perpetua, because I think that board's rather weak. Um, like you're not getting Retrograde every single time because you're not making curious and you're not uh you're basically lowering your ceiling artificially uh with that version now gamma with lambda up into ip into a three material Opelousa is nice but it just gets hard destroyed by lightning storm by evenly matched all these sorts of different things that you could actually just play the deck a lot better if you just don't go that route and that's the theory that i have for this deck currently is that i'm trying to end on a two to three material Opelousa. Abyss Dweller, Redoer Perpetua, and Retrograde on my board every single game. And the way I'm doing that is I'm using Winder to search Retrograde at all times if I draw it. And if I don't draw Winder, then I'm making Curious in my deck. And I'm using Curious to send Winder to Grave, I'm reviving Winder off of Dugaris, and then I'm searching Retrograde that way. And then from that point, I'm just making the Abyss Dweller, the Redoer, and the Perpetua. And I'm either making the Opelousa with the Curious and the Dugaris, or I'm just leaving my board as it is. It just really depends on how many extenders I have because that play does require a lot of extenders, but your deck is a lot of extenders, so it gets there. Uh, but also just drawing this card is insane. It's a really good extender because you can just attach another material off four Strix, uh, or if you make Tiger King first to get Tinky for a second Tiger, you can attach off this. Um, you can attach off of that for this and make Barricade Borg. Uh, basically getting to Retrograde is the entire point of this deck because I don't want to get Lightning Storm, I don't want to get Even Lead, I don't want to get Dark Ruler No More, which is a huge one. Uh, it just solves a lot of problems and it ticks a lot of boxes. And if you're doing the Dugaris play with this deck, uh, bringing back Winder, you can actually kill your opponent next turn without a main phase one because you'll be able to get double Winder, Perpetua in attack mode, uh, Dweller in attack mode, and Redoer in attack mode, which is 9600 damage. So it's not even a drawback to summon off Dugaris like it would be in the other variants, like the Cyberstein into Exterior or Winda variant. Um, so like you're just able to just do stuff and you're able to just kill them. 
uh, the turn after you do the Curious Dugari's play, so it's actually just not even a hindrance, which is nice. Uh, but that's all the real monsters. The last monsters in the deck is just three main deck Droll and Lockbirds. Uh, you have to respect Spiral. This is actually really good in the mirror as well. Um, this could be a different hand trap, like Ash or something, to be more uh, generically good across the board. But this deck is so good at dealing with decks that Ash would be good against, like, you know, trap decks like Lunar Light or Guru or stuff like that, or Salad. Um, if Salad's not making Dweller, then you just sort of run over them effectively. Um, it really just depends. Uh, but I felt like the hand trap that I wanted to main in this deck needed to be the most high impact one of the format. But that's all the monsters. That's 23 monsters. There are 17 spells and traps, starting out with the most broken card in my deck, which is the card I think should be banned if Konami ever wanted to address Luna Lights, Luna Light Perfume. Uh, the fact that this card does what it does and isn't a hard once per turn is nuts. Absolutely insane. Um, but like I said earlier, if you, uh, if you ban this card instead of Tiger, the Tiger interaction still exists with the rest of the deck, which makes the deck possibly good at being like a fusion based strategy which is what it's intended to be what it's designed as then can also throw a couple of rank fours in the mix but with this card gone uh you can't play foolish burial goods as a rota uh and you can't uh get like insane value off dangers you can't uh multiple reborn cards because this card being monster reborn and then also a rota is really oppressive it just does double duty uh, so like <laughs> this card needs that card needs to kind of go. I think that's the card that deserves to be banned far before Tiger does, um, because then the deck just becomes inconsistent but can still function in what it's designed to be. Uh, three copies of Fire Formation Tanky. Uh, clearly, you're just gonna play these because it searches everything in your deck. Um, three copies of Allure of Darkness. Uh, this card is really uh, hit or miss for me. I really like it because it means you draw hands that are consistently the same every single time. But it also is one of those things where um, sometimes you can actually screw yourself over with this card if you're just activating it willy-nilly. If you're just activating it just to see what your next two cards are, sometimes it'll reward you and sometimes it won't. Um, so you really have to be very disciplined with this card. Sometimes you don't activate this card if your hand is Chick Tiger and something else and Allure. Because um, your hand can already play and you want to thin your deck down a little bit before Alluring. Uh, and at worst case scenario, you'll end up banishing a Zephyros that way. And like you lose two level fours that way, but tough. You're going to end on Redo or Dweller anyway, right? Uh, but sometimes you use this because you're trying to dig for Winder or you're trying to hand correct. There are certain hands where this is free to activate, where you have like double Winder or you have Chick Armageddon Knight, right? A card you know you're going to banish and not lose anything from. But it's still one of those cards that's kind of like, eh, sometimes, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's good. But I still think that it's really nice because of how just simple it is. Uh, it rotates your hand around, gets you to where your deck is operating on full cylinders at all times. But, carrying on, uh, all three Foolishes, three goods, and one regular Foolish Burial. Um, I like Foolish Burial, uh, specifically to send Martin. Uh, <laughs> I'm rarely ever sending anything else with this card. Uh, I'm usually just going Foolish Burial for Martin, Add Trap, and then activating like Lunalite -like Perfume or something. Like, this combos with a lot, just like Armageddon Knight does. Except Armageddon Knight is a monster and a plus one, whereas... Foolish for Martin is just a one for one. Occasionally, you can like send Emerald Bird or Zephyros with this, but usually I'm sending Martin with it. Uh, sometimes I'm also sending Winder with it, depending. Uh, if my hand is relatively weak and I have to make Curious with like dangers and a normal summon, I have to send Lunalite Perfume with that Curious, and then I mill three. And if I don't mill Winder off of those three cards, and I'm able to play now because my perfume is live, obviously. Then I can Foolish Burial for Winder and then do the Dugari's play like I previously talked about. But Foolish Burial Goods is obviously really good. Uh, it's like, it's just a card that puts Lunalite -like Perfume in your grave. <laughs> it just, it, it's Rhoda. Uh, last spell in the deck is one copy of Metalfoes Fusion. Uh, I actually really like this card. Uh, this is a card that I was playing with uh, Souls in my deck as well. Uh, but this is just a really good discard card. You discard this card off of Dangers, you discard this card off of Lunalite -like Perfume. And it's just, it's effectively just a better upstart for this deck because you just put it back in your deck, draw a new card, uh, which effectively can get you there in a lot of situations. And it's also just, you know, really good to mill off Curious. Like, the deck is built to just be, like, really good at flowing all of its cards around. And Metal Fuzz Fusion is one of my favorite cards for doing that. Metal Fuzz Fusion, just discard it for the trap. Discard it for the uh, Lunar Light Perfume. Draw a fresh card. See what your next card is. Uh, just keep comboing off. Keep game, like Keeping the resource game up is what makes this deck really good. Uh, but that's the last spell uh, for the traps. Playing one copy of Serenade Dance, one copy of Flyback, and one copy of Retrograde. Um, I honestly want to play two copies of Retrograde, uh, but Flyback is just far too good at what it does. Uh, if I could get away with cutting Flyback for a second copy of Retrograde, I would. 
because retrograde is a card that is good to draw if you draw this card instead of winder then cool you just do the redo or perpetua dweller Opelousa play and you set retrograde whereas flyback if you draw flyback it sucks um still manageable but it sucks <laughs> there's no two ways about it uh whereas if it was a second copy of retrograde if you draw it it's always retrograde and then like perpetua could put retrograde the second copy under your redoer um but unfortunately that's just not the case uh but i mean flyback is still kind of good it just means your redoer doesn't get a guaranteed spin if you draw this card but i mean just i guess don't draw it it's the only like hard garnet in your deck uh so like i guess just don't draw the card <laughs> forehead <laughs> but anyway that's the 40 card main deck for the extra deck uh, one copy of Time Thief Redoer and one copy of Time Thief Perpetua. I really like the dynamic these cards uh, give. Um, like, the fact that Perpetua is just effectively another copy of Lunalite Tiger. If you actually start playing this deck correctly and start playing this engine correctly, uh, like, that's actually just insane. Um, every single turn, Perpetua is going to get you access to another level 4 between your turn and your opponent's. So it's effectively a Tiger. Because once you get access to Winder, which the entire deck is built around doing, you're able to Perpetua other Winders from your deck under your other rank 4s, like your Abyss Dweller or your Redoer. You're detaching those to either Blink Redoer out, or you're detaching the Winder from Dweller to activate its effect in your opponent's standby phase, and then you're Perpetua reviving that Winder. And so that's what I meant, like, with the Dugari's play, you just threaten game with this deck so effectively, because you end up with Redoer out, and you end up with Perpetua out, you end up with a Dweller, and you summon two Winders with Perpetua. You summon one Winder on their standby phase, and then you summon the second Winder on your standby phase, you don't have a battle phase, or you don't have a main phase one because of Duyari's reviving winder, but you're able to go 19, 17, 18, 18, 24, which is 9,600. And then Opelousa doesn't even need a stat line to be able to win the game there. Uh, but these cards are really good. They play into each other really well. I really like what Redoer does. Redoer is a hell of a card. Uh, it's definitely a card that I enjoy playing the most. Uh, but then for another card that's like Redoer, I'm playing one Outer Instinct Yarla. This card is really good as well. Uh, this card is the only one that allows you to trigger both Martin and Emerald Bird's effects in one go, uh, which is relevant because if you open a hand of just Lunalite cards, of just like Chick, Tiger, and its equivalents, and no Dangers, no Winder, no Extender that's not a Dark Beast Warrior, it gets really hard to make Curious effectively, but Nyarla like, changes that because Nyarla allows you to trigger both Martin and Emerald Bird underneath a Barricade Board Blocker. Uh, this becomes a Darkwing Beast because you're attaching four tricks to it. And so it's like, it lets you go plus one into your Curious play when you just took the minus one off Barricade Borg um, because you didn't have any other extenders. So it's actually just really good for that. Uh, one copy of Four Strix, this is Search of Zephyros. One copy of Number 60 Dugari's The Timeless, this card is really good. Uh, like, all of its effects end up getting used at some point. Uh, one Abyss Dweller, this card is game. Uh, I'm trying to end on this every turn one, uh, which is what sets this build apart from other, like, Time Thief uh, dependent variants is that I'm ending on Dweller every turn. Instead of ending on Lambda Gamma, I'm just trying to end on a card that says you can't play the game, period. Uh, one Tornado Dragon, this card's really good. It's an extender, uh, and it's also just good against back row decks. One copy of Brotherhood of the Firefist Tiger King, this card is also insane, uh, because it just sets Tinky, which gets Tiger from your deck. Uh, and then it also does niche things, like at YCS Vegas, I sphere moded my opponent, made Tiger King, negated the sphere mode, and then made Boral Sword and attacked for game with Boral Sword Tiger King over the sphere mode I gave them. So, like, this has really good interactions there. Uh, for Lynx, one Barricade Board Blocker, one Firefighting Daruma Doll, one Curious the Lightsworn Dominion, one Nightmare Unicorn, one Opelousa Bow of the Goddess, one Boral Sword Dragon, and one Unchained Abomination. Uh, this card is really good. Uh, Unchained Abomination plus Tornado Dragon is the go-to turn one against the Trap decks. Uh, once you know what you're playing or if you have a read on it. Or sometimes, depending on how you're feeling... Instead of making Opelousa, like if you're going to make a 2-material Opelousa, uh, turn 1 with your Redoer, Dweller, Perpetua, Retrograde board, then you just make Abomination instead of the Dwe of the Opelousa, because like, the Abomination puts a lot more immediate pressure, and your opponent's probably not playing through the Redoer with Trap under it, and Dweller, and Retrograde, anyway, because that's 4 points of interaction, and the Dweller is putting them under a Floodgate. Um, so like, it's just one of those things where it's just like, this card is sometimes superior and like it's really good against trap decks so that's why i'm playing it uh this card says destroy like 17 times in its card text so why would i not play it but effectively that is the way this deck functions uh if you're interested in seeing how this deck plays out uh i am going to be streaming later today uh link is in the description as usual uh and i'm going to be playing predominantly this build on stream uh on the db ladder because i need to get back to uh to just play testing a lot because 
I really, really like Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. It's just one of those things where I'm really enjoying the game. Vegas was a really cool event. I can't wait for Charlotte, because that's only a three-hour drive away from me. And I'm just actually really excited to play Yu-Gi-Oh! for the first time in a long time, all the way culminating up to Master Rule 5 being put into effect, which is going to make me really want to play like every deck under the sun once that gets officially implemented. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below uh, about this deck. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them in as, as late least of a snarky way possible. I know I've had a bad habit of that in the past. Trying to break it. Be lenient. Uh, but other than that, as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you liked what you saw and are new here and want to see more content. Other than that, I guess that's going to be it for this video. Sorry about this being a long one, but I felt like there was a lot to talk about. But anyway, thanks for watching and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.